Hello, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you are watching this special bonus extra episode of Dash Detailed. You may have heard that the multi-platform Jax Wallet is soon to integrate its fourth supported currency, Dash. I have spoken with Jax founder Anthony Diorio today in an episode that was meant to be published in a couple of weeks, but it turns out that the Jax team has been working much more quickly than anyone knew. And so you should see this interview now. Well, Anthony Diorio, I feel compelled to tell everyone uh, about the faux pas I made last week when I called you Anthony Delorio. <laughs> and yeah, and you informed me, and I had no idea that, but if now that I think about it, it makes sense that it's a capital I in your name. And so in any font that doesn't have serif on it, a capital I is going to look like a lowercase l. And you said about half the people, half people call you Delorio? That's right, because in a lot of print stuff, no matter how many times I tell them, uh, it always seems to get lost in translation. So uh, it's it looks like an owl. I know I've got a friend of mine called Ileana who's in the space. Same thing with her. She looks like she has two I's or two L's side by side. That's I L I A N A, and even she must have even a harder time than I because it looks like Lilana. So yeah, I, I tell my team here, especially always work with with serif with serif fonts for my name. But yeah, over the internet, it's very difficult. And yeah, I'm either I'm Diorio is the proper way of pronouncing it, like D with Oreo cookie beside it. But Delorio is uh, a lot of people, uh, I guess, know me by that. But I try to correct it. I see. All right. Well, you shall be called Diorio on Dash Detailed. Thank you very much. And yes, yes. My small gift to you. Now, the first thing I want to ask you is for you to just give us uh, a brief bio of yourself, just for those who may not know uh, where it is that you're coming from and what it is that you've done. Sure. Uh, I got into the, the crypto space in 2012. Uh, Basically, it floored me. It, it completely aligned for me with with how money should be and how technology should be coming together. And it just it was just such amazing. I've, I've been in, in in computers and technology all my life, and I've been working full time in, in blockchain since mid 2012. I started the Toronto Bitcoin Meetup Group that year. I got into uh, started working on the wallet space, recognizing that the the wallet is really going to be that that interface for this technology. So in 2013, uh, we started CryptoKit. Uh, at the end, right about a month after we launched CryptoKit, uh, Vitalik Buterin, who I'd known for for a while already, showed me the white paper and for Ethereum, and dropped CryptoKit, and then became the second founder of the team. And then it was all on Ethereum for quite a long time. Uh, in 2014, right at the beginning, January 1st, actually 2014, we opened up Decentral, which is a hub in Toronto for where. Our, I really want to bring people in the community together where we would do Which our is where meetups. you are now. That's where yeah. I am right now. And you can see it's quite empty because we're on a weekend here, but usually we've got about 15 full-time people working here. And Decentral Open, it's been two and a half years now. Uh, we've got a very active Bitcoin ETM, the second one in the world, actually. And every day we've got 30, 40, 50 people coming, buying and selling Bitcoin from our machine here. So we've really mastered the art of the ATM when most people in the space have kind of gotten out of that. It's, it's very difficult to run a Bitcoin ATM. So through that and through helping customers set up wallets and things we really learned and really over the last few years of, of how a wallet should really be so after uh leaving the leaving at the ethereum project once the crowd seal was done uh, i did a lot of the work with the setting up of the foundation decentral was the first hub for ethereum it's really where all the initial uh people came together it's where we hired our first people our first uh staff for ethereum and then when the money came in afterwards it was it was the main point was to build up the platform so I also wasn't very keen on working into a foundation when we had switched to a foundation. Uh, the, the plan was actually to be, uh, we were supposed to be shareholders in, in a company in the Ethereum thing, the initial founders, and that got changed over to a foundation. So I uh, moved away to help to start develop more infrastructure around Ethereum and continue going in the wallet space. So in 2015, we launched a, a Rush Wallet, which is an HTML5 Bitcoin wallet. And then we just continued on in the wallet space in 2000 and actually, sorry, it was 2014 we launched, we launched Rush Wallet. 2015, we started doing consulting and started working with banks and started working with enterprise clients as the NASDAQ announcement came out and everybody started saying, man, we've got to get into this technology. So we started doing consulting 
and over the over the year of 2015 started working more and more on the wallet space and then we launched our our wallet jacks uh just a, a few months ago and that's really i guess what we're here to discuss yeah yeah well uh before i ask you about the Dash integration specifically, which is of course the primary reason I called you today. I have to ask you the first question that came to my mind when I began thinking about Jack's wallet, and it was the first question that Pete uh, had for you as well when I told him that we were scheduled to interview, which is, does one even aspire to make money, like to make one's money back from a free and open source wallet or is that the kind is that almost like a freemium model like the wallets are free and you sell other services and you hope that the free wallets just bring people around to the other services yeah so i guess um maybe before we start talking about the monetization path it's kind of a, good to understand it and the short answer is yes it's definitely a monetization play in what we're doing uh so there's there's a number of things but maybe we can start with just with 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 the whole concept of what we're trying to create and then how we think that what we're trying to do with this free wallet, how that leads into the path for, for monetization. Is that something that we could kind of go, because it's before yeah, yeah, jumping, yeah. jumping into our avenues of monetization, it kind of has to figure out what we're, what we're doing before that's gonna lead us up to that, so. Build the foundation for build me. Build the yeah. foundation. So in 2013, uh, the first space I was in was in the, in the Bitcoin gaming space. So I had a site called Satoshi Circle it was a graphically faced Bitcoin uh, gaming site where, where uh, almost like a like a roulette wheel game with penguins and all kinds. It was a really cool game, and it had a lot of got a lot of attention. And we had a wallet system basically, and we had a, a system in place where people didn't need accounts or, or logins to to get into the game. And that's something I've always been big on: is frictionless systems and interfaces. And how do we remove all of the 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 uh, the in-between stuff that we're so used to now, such as usernames and passwords and things that we we take we, we accept, but there's really a lot better systems out there to do it. So we created a site where basically you're given a QR code and you're given a secret URL right when you go to the page. Secret URL is actually your login to, to get back to your account. So you bookmark that, that's all you need to get back get back in. You wouldn't need a username or a password. You were given a, a, a uh, customized uh, QR code so you can send funds into the game and start playing immediately. So, and then when you want to remove the funds, you can just you can just take them out quickly. So it's all about removing points of friction, having great user experiences, and that what that's what we did in that game. Then I realized though that that you know we've really got a wallet system here. That's really what we have. Is you, you the customer gets a link, gets a deposit address. Uh, the but what I didn't like about it is that we were holding on to customer funds for our game. So we would always encourage people to remove your funds. We don't want to be holding on your funds. Mm -hmm. I was always seeing what's going on in the space and everything seemed to happen because people were holding on to other people's money. And that's just I, the technology that we're in and, and blockchain enables you to be your own bank. So sites that really want to hold on to people's money is really something that I don't quite understand uh, unless they want to use those funds for other things. And then there, but it just, the technology enables you to be your own bank. So from that, he said, well, we've got a wallet why don't we try to create a better system where we're not holding on to customer funds, but we're still offering the same ease, frictionless way for people to get access to their Bitcoins and where the customer can hold their keys and we're just an interface and experience that connects the two, but never has access to customer funds and never holds customer funds. So from there, we created, started working on a project called Rush Wallet. And we were learning uh, in this space, there was a wallet called Insta Wallet which is a similar concept of a secret URL and a very fast way to get a wallet. The problem is they were holding on to customer funds. They got hacked, customer funds were lost. I think that most of it was returned, but I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but we, we set out then to create the better Insta wallet, which had again, um, customers holding their keys, blockchain holding the funds, just providing a user experience for the wallet and a go-between. So we started working on Rush Wallet. And then uh, we went. I went to a, a New York conference inside Bitcoin. This would have been 2013, and there was a, a talk from the, the the W3 Web Standards guy about how Bitcoin needs to be brought into the browser. And what we did is we created the first Chrome extension Bitcoin wallet. And Chrome extensions, uh, there was there was nothing like it before. And the reason why was uh, the reason why we created it was. We don't like usernames, we don't like logins. Most of the web wallets, you'd have to open up a tab, log into a web wallet. Then if you wanna make a payment online, you gotta switch tabs, copy and paste addresses. So what we wanna do, again, removing friction points, we wanted a very simple where you just open up the Chrome extension, you pop it up, it's in your browser, 
you stay on the site that you're on and it automatically grabs addresses on the page and populates it into the wallet so that you offer one-click payments. Without needing to log into any website, without needing to log into your account, you open it, you click pay and you close it. Again, just offering experience that we can now start working with and interacting with a website and grabbing, grabbing and making it very simple and frictionless to make payments. So that's when CryptoKit launched and then the whole Ethereum thing started, so we kind of put that on the back burner. I believe that uh, the wallet is really the interface to this technology. It's what's used for making payments. It's what's used to allow people to access their funds. So what we're building is really an interface for blockchain. We want to create that user experience. We want to create what the browser did for the internet for blockchain, because I think a lot of it is focused on developers right now, but this, this technology is stuff that I want to take to the masses. So every product we work on is about bringing this technology and making it simple and easy to understand and useful for the masses. People like my dad who are into Bitcoin and are into Ethereum and, and, and have them, but aren't necessarily, um, that's really what our path was, is to create a user experience and create an amazing experience for blockchain. Because within the wallet, you can start doing a number of things. You can start adding applications. You can start adding integrations with ways that you can buy and sell Bitcoin. And it really all comes back to if you can, if you can get your wallet in the, in the hands of people that uh, and make it in a way that they understand how it works and it has a great user experience, I think that's going to be the stepping stone for people getting into the blockchain space. So our philosophy is never holding or, or having access to customer funds. Mm -hmm. It's having code that's visible and audible so you can see what it's doing. Okay, it's using standards where if we ever go down, you could be able to take your keys and be able to put it into another wallet and have access to your to your funds. It's the, the core principles that we've seen that blockchain enables that aren't necessarily always used in the space right now, but that's where we want to take things. Uh, we want to ensure that there's a, a frictionless experience where you can add levels of security, but as a power user, you're not being deterred by friction points such as having to give your Facebook account to log in or having to use a username and password or having to provide information. So we don't, we want to collect as little information from our users as possible, which really means we don't collect any, any information from users. Right. Keys so are generated client side and never sent to any server. So the user is always in control of their keys. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the, the guiding principles. Also being very, uh, customer support is huge to us. I think we have the leading, we have industry leading customer support and I'm very accessible. And I think that's very important in this space as well because people want to know if there's a face behind it and they have to build up trust because many people have been burned. And that's just one of the things that you need, to, everybody needs to do much better when they are doing something that's actually uh, has an involvement with, with people's assets. You know, that I know from firsthand experience that you uh, practice what you preach in terms of customer support because I actually um, had a CryptoKit account myself um, that I was playing around with Ethereum with last year and um, I was having some little hiccup and I went to the Ethereum subreddit to ask about it and you responded. You responded to help me with my problem. I. I we, we've had 1,600 support requests since we've launched. That's a lot. We've got a superstar team that's working on customer support. When things get to the point where there's out of the order and, and we've been able to solve everything. We've solved, we've solved like we're, we're, we're just, it, it's, it's very important for us to get back to people because we realize we're, we're, we're dealing with people's money here. And we also realize that we need to keep up a reputation. There's been so much tarnish that's going on in space. So we, we're taking all those, those negative things that we've seen, we're trying to make them better, and we're trying to gain the trust of our customers. And we're continually also trying to further decentralize the things that we are doing so that you don't have to trust us. We want products where you don't have to trust us. And this is why you can see the code. This is why you can see your keys are, are created on your own, your own side. All these things that I think the space needs more and more of, and that's what we're trying to push forward. So then, Anthony, I imagine that you and your on top of it customer service people uh, all like to get paid. So then is the monetization model, uh, you hope that uh, an experience like the Jax wallet just increases the value of, say, coins that your organization holds? So is it like no. hoping that your own no, investment... And, and we don't hold coins, so just, I mean, uh, no, but that's, that's definitely not it. It's not about the value of coins at all. So. If you have a great user experience and if you become that experience and dashboard for blockchain, you start getting people wanting to integrate in your products. Okay, so we've seen an influx of, of coins that do want to be in our wallet. So uh, we've got, we're, we're, we're working with Rootstock, we're working with Zcash, we're working, of course, Dash was the, was the, 
the, the most resounding community request that that's why we're putting that in next. But the, the play for us is really to integrate with third party services around the world that enable people to get in and out of these tokens and exchange the tokens. That's our play. So when you're not holding customer keys or taking custodianship of customer funds, you're not regulated. And that's a, a big part of our play as well is we have no regulations because we don't have access to customer coins and we don't hold on to customer coins. What we can do now is we can go around the world and we can internationalize and partner with services in localized regions that, that they take the offloading of the regulations and the KYC AML obligations and we can put their API, APIs into our product and we can then just be that added dashboard for other facilitation of things. So we've got Shapeshift integration. So right now you can Shapeshift between your Ether, between your DAO, between your, your Bitcoin right inside of JAX, instead of having to go to the Shapeshift website, uh, send them your address, copy it. It's a lot more friction points that if you do it right in the wallet, it already knows your addresses and you can, it can just send back and forth between stuff. So being that gateway and that interface for blockchain, we have customers, we have uh, partners that want to be inside of JAX. Even Coinbase approached us for their widget for using debit cards and credit cards to put inside of JAX. Between okay. Shapeshift, between Coinbase, between all other areas around the world that take care of and know their localized regulations, we pass that all off to them. We take their APIs, we customize the look to ensure that it stays consistent with the way that we want things to be inside of JAX. And now we're taking uh, we're taking, we'll be taking commissions between the transactions that are flowing between different coins inside of, inside of Jack. That's one play for our monetization. We have some hardware products uh, coming out and we've got a cold storage wallet called the Jack's Ice Cube, which oh, we've wow. we announced, which is going to be your uh, place where the, the, the private key gets stored. It doesn't have an internet connection. It using, uses a camera and scan, sorry, a, a screen and camera to send signed transactions back and forth without the keys ever touching or being part of the internet. Then we have another hardware piece that we're going to be announcing very soon as well. So the monetization for us is third parties that we can integrate and we can start having as, as the command center, you don't need to be outside of JAX to do your shape shifting. You don't need to be outside of JAX to do your switching between your, between your debit card and buying and purchasing through, through the CoinPage widget and a number of other integrations that we're going to be doing. So, so now, yeah. Um, so JAX wallet currently supports three tokens. Uh, is that correct? Correct. Okay. So now tell me, uh, you say that the this forthcoming Dash integration, I, I don't know how you phrased it, that there was like a, a loud community cry for it or something. Not how did that come about? Is, is we, we basically put it out there many times is what do you want to see inside of JAX? What's the next token we should add? And, and Dash was the most vocal and, and it was by far for us the very easy decision to start working with that community. So, uh, you know, I hadn't followed Dash too much. Uh, mm -hmm. I you know, been a Bitcoin person, been an Ethereum person, but really I'm an agnostic. I, I like choice and I think that's great for everybody. So we want to be that agnostic blockchain wallet that allows people to make the choices which which currencies and which tokens they want to be dealing with. That's that's our goal. So when we reached out, it was just a very, a very uh, loud response of, hey, we'd love to see Dash inside of Jax. And that's what we started to put our efforts towards. So were these like tweets or emails or Reddit or how how were you getting these responses? Yeah, mostly uh, mostly tweets. So we were tweeting out, "What would you like to see?" And, and it was mostly tweets. Uh, we got emails. We we do get. I mean, we've got requests for everything. We've got re requests for Litecoin. We got requests for uh, for Monero. We're getting requests for Lisk. Uh, we're getting. We've, we've got we've got requests for everything because really, it, the a lot of the coins have been underserved in the wallet space. They don't have the infrastructure, and there's, there hasn't been a lot of uh, back end, like um, the tie ins that enable wallets to send transactions and see balances just isn't there for many of the wallets out there. I mean, even Litecoin, I'm really surprised that Litecoin all the time hasn't really had that, that good wallet. And that's what we want to become. We want to become that agnostic blockchain wallet that brings all the communities together because we're all in, I think, this for the particular technology. And I think we want to just provide that experience that isn't focused just on Bitcoin or isn't just focused on Ethereum. It's going to be focused on what what everybody wants to have, and we just want to become that interface and user experience. And so, any coin that's supported within Jax, will they be usable with, say, like the Ice Cube wallet and or like uh, the Coinbase buy? Yeah. So what we did is we set up a, a structure where one twelve set mnemonic or one twelve set seed enables you to derive all your keys for any token you'll ever want in the future. So. If you have a Jax wallet right now, you've got your master mnemonic of 12 words. 
those enable you to derive your HD, your high particle deterministic wallets for Bitcoin. It enables you to get it for Ethereum. It's going to enable you to get it for Dash. You're not going to have to change your key. Everything the way that we've set things up, and you just you can write that down, store it somewhere safe. It can be in the ice cube. Uh, any token we add, you'll be able to derive from that one master seed. That's how we've set things up. Yeah. And so you all have uh, an iOS and an Android mobile wallet, and then a web interface as well. Is that correct? So we've got nine different platforms right now. We've got oh. Android, I, Android, and iOS tablet and mobile versions. We okay. have three desktop versions: Linux, Windows, and uh, and, and Apple, and we've got a Firefox extension and a Chrome extension. Yeah. And, yeah. And, the and, and the reason why we can have that is that we use a single code base for development and we wrap it up and package it into the different formats and, and, and then able to deploy very rapidly. What we had noticed as well in the space is that you'd have a iPhone wallet and then you have an Android wallet for a company and they'd be completely different and the code bases would get completely out of, out of, out of sync and they'd look different and all these different things. So, Creating that similar user experience across devices and that you can pair across all devices was really important for us as well. And that was another feature of JAX that enables us to deploy quickly, develop quickly, and keep the similar user experience across everything, which is really one of the goals we were going for. So we'll probably be going on more platforms in the future as well. But we really wanted that wallet to be what download what when people come to our ATM, it's like what down what wallet should we download? We used to have to ask, well, if you're on iPhone, download this wallet. If you're on Android, download this. If you want a desktop experience, you want to download this other wallet. We wanted right. it to be, what do you want to download? You're going to want to download Jax, and you can use it everywhere. So that's really what's the goal that we were hitting was to tell people when they come to the machine, what should I download? Download Jax. That's the that's really was, was one of our goals as well. So user experience, uh, flexibility between devices, and being that really that one cornerstone wall that really is going to appeal to all different assets, digital assets in the blockchain space. I got to say, that really sounds like y'all are wallet specialists. <laughs> well, we've been doing it for quite a while. It's really a passion of mine. And uh, yeah, I think that's what's needed. As I said before, the browser brought to life the internet. We want and believe the wallet. And the wallet's just one part of what we're doing in the future. But we believe that interface is what we want to be more, more known as. We want to be known as your blockchain interface. Basically, it's how you are going to understand what's going on in blockchain and how the masses will be able to participate in this amazing technology that enables you to take back really control of your digital life. That's everything we're going towards is the, the system doesn't work right now. You rely on third parties for every area of your life, whether it's identity, whether it's with your digital assets. It's time to take back control of yourself. And this technology enables you to be your own bank. It enables you to store your own contracts. It enables you to 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 just just be in control of everything that that you have in your digital life, and I think that's a very powerful thing, and that's what we hope the interface that we're creating with Jax is really going to be that that interface and that connection that bridges people's keys and people's ownership of things with the blockchain technology. So, with the Dash integration, uh, will it offer from within Jax the ability to either? Uh, instant send so like to achieve the instant confirmation or to like private send which i guess would involve um like the the mixing within the wallet i don't know yeah. if that so, so the way that we're, that we're positioning things right now is we are providing wallet services that's mm -hmm. the main thing so people can store their dash right now any token that we're adding is going to be very focused on the basics right now uh, for for a bunch of reasons first of all our goal is to get as many people being able to to, to have access to to their keys and storing on the blockchain, all the, all the stuff that they have. Mm -hmm. We're not going to start specializing in the different tokens in terms of other features very soon. And there might be some more involvement we're going to need from the communities in order to do that. It could be funding that needs to come in for certain things for that because in, in our grasp, we're not just focusing on a Bitcoin wallet. If we were, we could target Bitcoin specifically and do all the things we wanted to do for that. Or if we were just doing Ethereum, it would be all Ethereum. We need to be agnostic, so it means that we have to spread ourselves out a little bit. So the goal is to get as many tokens in just with the abilities to access and be able to 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 um, give access to people's funds. Uh, but in the future, yes, uh, depending on how things go and depending on, on how we can partner more closer, perhaps with more development needs and things, we will look to other features as well. But right now we're on the let's carry as many tokens as we can and make sense right now. Let's figure out our monetization of being able to, to transfer back and forth and be able to start covering our costs on that side of things. And let's start internationalizing different languages. Let's get out to China. Let's provide the best experience for people out there in China with a, a wallet that's tailored to them. Let's get them on all the different app stores all around the world. 
there's not just a Play Store and, and the iPhone Store. There's, there's stores in India, there's stores in China that we need to really want to get our wallet to be that default global wallet. That's what we're going to focus on. And then we can start tailoring and start doing some of the more uh, specialized things for the different tokens that we're going to be offering. That you know, that really reminds me of one of the things that I noticed about like the Dash people when I first started looking more closely about them, that like you, um, they were making such a concerted effort to like put out these translations in all these different languages and have like special wikis in these different languages and even special sections of their YouTube channels that were in different languages. And so that's, I'm, yeah, that really seems like such an obvious approach for networks that, that don't know borders. Well, I have a final question for you, Anthony, which is, is there any sort of time frame that we may look forward to, to the, the addition of a fourth coin being Dash and Jax? I would have liked to say it was supposed to come out this week, but we're targeting oh. next week. Next yeah. week? We're targeting, we're targeting next week. I don't like to make firm commitments, but that's, that's our target and that's our goal right now. Uh, yeah, I was hoping to get it done this week. We're we're we want to we're setting up a lot of back end infrastructure, so we get to redesign things a bit to enable to to um, to be able to to add more and more coins because just having the three that we had at the top really was just made for those three right now. So we've had to really build out a new user design, a way that you're going to be able to sort coins, you're going to be able to uncheck the ones you don't want to see, making it tailored because if you're a Bitcoin person, maybe you don't want to see the DAO on on your wallet. So we're going to tailor it so that you can actually, if you just want to be a Bitcoin wallet, you can just see Bitcoin right there. But if you want to add Dash, now you're going to see Bitcoin and Dash. And also a way for people to, to see different currencies involved, drag and drop to different orders of things. So we've really done a, amazing work on our, on our new layout to be able to add these new coins down the road. And that's, that's when a, a big push is back end stuff. But then once we do, we're going to be able to get Dash out. We're going to be able to get Litecoin out. We're going to be able to get Dogecoin very rapidly because of the work that we're doing on the back ends. Right on. All right, well, that answers all of my questions. So thanks so much for your time, Anthony Diorio, and maybe we'll chat again in the future. Thank you, and I'm really looking forward to getting to know the Dash community better. It's, uh, I've been doing a lot of research over the last few days, and it, it's just our team is, has, has said how much they appreciate, actually, the, some of the calmness that goes on in the Dash community and just some of the, 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 the way that the, the money is going towards development projects and things. I just think it's a great strategy. And we've got some ideas of things that we're going to be doing and, and projects that will be taking some of the concepts, I think, from what the community of Dash is doing. So looking at getting to, know, to go to know the Dash community and being able to provide services for them. And I think it's going to be a nice ride ahead. So, Well, I don't think you'll be disappointed. So Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> As a final message, do you ever find that when you're talking to someone about your interest in Dash, you wish you had somewhere to point them for more information? Well, my manservant and I have recently had business cards for this show made up. You'll see the title is on the front here. And on the back, you'll see a show to keep you in the know about Dash Digital Cash with the URL of this channel. And we would be overjoyed to ship you 20 or so of these for free in the mail if they could be useful to you. If you would like some Dash Detailed Business cards shipped to you free in the mail, just send your mailing address to amanda at dash.org. I'll get you hooked up. I invite you to share today's interview episode with a friend, and we'll see you next Wednesday. I invite you to sit back, relax, and listen to my chat with Dash's man with the financial plans, Ryan Taylor. I think that a, a more efficient model is to allocate what's needed to secure the network to that task and allocate what's needed to other tasks uh, as well in order to have a more holistic and robust system.